All right, here we go. Heading down the basement stairs. What lies down below? All right, everyone, we are traveling through the historic town of Baldwinsville, New York, as we head towards an estate sale right off the beautiful Seneca River. This house is from the 1940s. We are almost there. All right, so it is one of these houses coming up here. It's supposed to be to the left. So I don't think it's too far away. Look at the age of these houses. I absolutely love driving through this little village. It's so nice. And I think it's up here a little bit more. Oh, here we go. Here it is. Looks like an old barn. Look at his house. Wow, awesome. So yeah, that's the outside of the house. And then back here is the beautiful Seneca River that I was telling you about. So I'm going to just walk back here a moment. This is a uh, pre-sale, so I've got to be careful here because they're regrading all this. But you could see here, they have a really nice yard. There's a trampoline back there. They have shed space and that beautiful view. I mean, that is just, just amazing, incredible. You know, no matter how long you do this, there's always an excitement before the sale as you look at the house and you're wondering what's inside there, what kind of rooms are there, what does it all look like? Even though there's pictures ahead of time you can see, there's nothing like being in there yourself. Just 15 minutes, we're in those doors. And just in case anyone was wondering, this house is definitely on the grid. All right, we're going in. All right, so we're in and believe it or not, I'm actually going to head over to the breakables section because I'm really looking more for vases as I started to break into this area more. And you know, this, experience is starting to pay off a bit because we're talking about this crimped type of edge this overlay that the vase has and this looks like Fenton to me and this green color is gorgeous it's definitely vintage for only $12 that's definitely a good price on it so we are going to start off with this look at this I don't see any chips cracks anything it's a really nice piece so we're gonna start off with this is our first pickup of the day all right now many of you are probably looking at this gilded plate I mean it's gorgeous look at the pink flowers you know I used to say flowers are my enemy but now I'm starting to say they are my friend because they really do look nice on the plate here I will probably need help in the comment section on identifying the type of flower this is. It's 20 bucks, which I think is a good price. Uh, this is one of these uh, older Japanese plates. Here's the mark. Uh, I think it's one of these Nippon uh, Japanese plates. It looks nice on the back. So you've got floral decorations on the side as well. I uh, don't see any damage to it. So we're going to grab this one for the 20 as well. What a piece. All right, so here's another vase, but this one here is from Germany. It's this Echt Cobalt. Uh, Beruther is the uh, brand name. So I don't think this one would go for much more than the 10, plus you got to factor in the shipping. So we're going to leave this one for someone else. I think that this is a bride's basket. Too bad there's no gifts of silver in it. Uh, but it does have these nice flowers on it. And again, we have these nice crimped edges. It's a nice glass piece. It's um, only $8. So it uh, doesn't have a maker's mark on it, but I still think that uh, this is another nice pickup. And this would be pretty easy to ship too. So for under $10, definitely going to go for this. All right, so this piece here is really nice. This is actually, if you look on the bottom, this is our first piece 
that we've come across that's actually marked Fenton. Sometimes it's marked, sometimes not. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a great okay. uh, milk glass piece. It has, you know, a nice Christmas design right. element to it. Uh, it's a fairy lamp, so you'd put like a candle in it and it would serve as like a nightlight. You know, you could use it in nurseries or something like that. So um, only 15 bucks for this is definitely a good price. So we're gonna pick this up. It has these nice little bumps on it, and a nice uh, hobnail design element. Really cool. So we are loading up with the breakables. And here's another thing I saw in the Fenton piece. If you look inside, you'll see that it's signed by Alice Farley and she signed a bunch of Fenton pieces and you know, it does make it more desirable if you have a signed piece. So very excited about this. All right, so we cleared off most of this. If you're wondering, this is not marked silver or anything, and it is pretty tarnished. There's a clear glass vase up there. It's like a you know rose vase. I'm gonna pass on that. And over here, uh, we have some Cleveland Brody milk glass. Uh, this is like a sherbet dessert dish. Um, not really worth that much, so I'm gonna pass on this. So just keep that in mind. Not all milk glass is uh, really valuable. This right here is a little ginger jar. Uh, this one has the China mark. We were talking about this in the last video. That's good if it just says China. Uh, it's bad if it says made in China, but that's about retail on it. And maybe get a little bit more out of it, but not worth picking up for the 20. Okay, and his shorter little friend here. Uh, this is Copeland, uh, China. Uh, this is made in England. Uh, you know, it's nice. People like miniatures, but it's just one set. Uh, they want 15 bucks for it, which is a little too much for me. I mean, maybe you could get 30 out of it, but yeah, I want a bigger return than that. So I'm going to leave that there. All right, so this one here, I'm not too sure. Now, it doesn't feel strong or anything like that. It's very light. It's of Asian origin. It looks more modern than some of the other pieces that I've picked up. I, technically, it's vintage, but it's 20 bucks. I'm not sure about the maker's mark here. So this is one, uh, you know, obviously it's some kind of dish, but I'm not exactly sure uh, too much more about it. So this is one, let me know in the comments if you would have picked this one up. I'm gonna leave it here uh, just because I don't know too much more about it, but that's gonna happen as I'm learning this area more and more. So give me your input. All right, so this is gonna be some prime time history right here. Uh, you know, I've been paying attention. I've been paying attention as I've been studying up on this topic, and you know, I've heard a lot about Wedgwood. And so, this is a piece of Wedgwood. It's pretty small on the bottom where you would see it marked. Let me show you right there. Uh, but this particular one is a popular design with the feather and the cattails. So, it's like a goblet pot or vase and it's only five dollars so this is definitely a good one you got to be careful because certain designs aren't really worth that much but this one um, was not made as frequently as some of the other ones uh, were so you know uh, i saw an asking price on one of these for 60 so five dollars definitely uh, sounds like a good buy-in on this so uh, look at this this looks a lot different than uh, some of the other prime time boxes as we continue to expand into this new area all right i'm gonna move this aside i'm not getting this it's not stainless steel uh, we're gonna go over here and take a peek at this now this is just not the same quality as the one that i have down there look at the difference right uh this one is 10 bucks i'd say you could probably get like 15 out of it Maybe um, it's Norotaki, and it's just much more common than the one we have down there. I mean, it's just night and day. So I just wanted to show the contrast off when you come across these things. So we're gonna leave this one here. All right, so the rest of the stuff we have here, this is this green cabbage china set. Pretty cool. Uh, right now, I'm not going to be into buying big sets of china, because I'm really just trying to start out with the smaller pieces. And here's some Woodrose uh, ivory china. 
Uh, I've definitely heard a lot about Woodrose uh, China. There's a ton of it there, $100 for all of it. Uh, but again, right now, I'm starting with the smaller pieces and then eventually maybe I'll work my way up to sets like that. All right, so we did good with this section. This is what we pulled out of it, just to summarize. And so now we're gonna move around the rest of the house. All right, so that's where we were over there. And then moving over here, anything with a green sticker is just a buck. And um, as we continue to transform into flowers being our friend. This is a really cool old tin, and I love the bright colors on it. So we're gonna pick this one up for a buck. Someone's definitely going to want this. And there's the inside, nice and clean. All right, so this is one of these cobalt blue vases. This was made in Japan. Uh, I'm gonna pass on this one for 10. You could probably get like 18 out of it, but we'll leave it here. Uh, there are some family photos here. Uh, it has been confirmed uh, by the estate sale dealers that the family does not want the photos, so no comments uh, telling me why did you get the family photos. Um, two bucks for this one. I'm gonna pick this one up because I like this one. And I'm gonna leave the kids behind. I normally don't pick up the kid ones unless they're doing something real interesting, but this is pretty neat and it does have the person's name on the back so I could do a little bit of research. There is no uh, hat inside of the uh, bell tone hat container. Pretty cool, but also pretty big. All right, so this here is a pewter vase. Uh, not gonna get too much out of this. Even though it's five bucks, I'm gonna leave it here. But this for five bucks, I'm definitely gonna go after. You've seen me go after these in prior videos. I've always done very well, and now that it is October, I uh, definitely want to pick this up because people are looking for these vintage heaters. Uh, I could probably get 60 bucks or more out of this, so I am going to plug this in and see if it works. You'll know because it'll start turning orange real quick, so let's get it plugged in. So it instantly turned on, so this works for sure. The heat is just coming out of this super fast. It's super toasty, so let's turn this off and we're gonna pick this up for the five. Wow, this brings back a lot of memories. I had one of these Galaxy 3-speed fans when I was a kid uh, in my bedroom. I used to love talking into it and pretending I was Darth Vader or you know some bad guy or something. So um, I'm sure many of you did as well. Let me know in the comments if this brings back a lot of memories. It's a good deal on it, eight bucks. Uh, you can probably get like $70 out of it actually. Um, you know, take a little time to clean, um, but really, the turnoff for me is just the size of this thing and the uh, shipping cost on it. Uh, if it was something that went for over a hundred, I'd go for it. But uh, I'm gonna leave it here for someone else. But definitely, great, great memories on this blue fan. All right. Well, this is one you just don't see too often. The Sears Color Flame Crystals. Uh, it just doesn't come to the secondary market often. Uh, it is full. It's copper sulfate. We're gonna pick this one up. Uh, let me know in the comments if you ever used this back in the day. Uh, what an interesting assortment of items at this sale. All right, well, this is right off the front door. Uh, this is just something you don't see often either. I'm gonna turn this to the side so you can see more what this is. It's a magic bow tire from Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company. I don't know if it works, but someone probably would just want something like this for parts. So I'm gonna move this away from uh, the glass stuff. Could you imagine if I just dropped that over the glass items and shattered everything I just picked up? So <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a neat piece. Uh, we're gonna pick it up for $5. I can't pass up on something this cool and vintage for the five bucks. So very neat piece. All right, so I was just about to head off into this area, but this caught my eye. This looks to be some type of perfumer or aromatizer. So you could see you put the liquid in here and then it comes out this way. Uh, so this is what they used to use back in the day. Uh, so, you know, we've definitely come a long way uh, nowadays using like plugins and renews it and stuff. But this is another $5 deal. So I'm gonna pick this up. I mean, this is cool. It has this metal base. You could see it's gotten a little bit of the green patina on it. So this might be copper. This is really cool. So um, 
Yeah, I'm definitely gonna pick this up for the five. All right, now this piece here, which is pretty cheap and flimsy actually, uh, this has a stripped screw. So cannot get it out, even though we have all these different screwdrivers actually to the side to use. So we're gonna leave this here. Um, you know, we'll get the glass part though. That's the most valuable part. And someone could always buy something else to hang that off of. We just don't wanna to spend too much time on that because you know, we have more rooms to explore. All right, so these are beautiful. Look at the colors popping on these flowers. Absolutely gorgeous. This price though, 50 bucks, would be about retail on it. So that's why we're gonna leave these here, but I did wanna show them to you because they are really nice. All right, so we got some modern corningware, which I'm gonna pass on, and we do have prices all over the place on the breakables. So if you look at this, this teapot is marked at $100. It does have some wear on it. It's made in England. Uh, it's from Sadler. So that's up there, gonna pass on that. And then you've got this frosted Duncan Miller vase. Uh, they're asking $100 on that. It's definitely a cool piece, but right now, you know, I'm not doing $100 buy-ins on the glass pieces until I get more familiar with these uh, deals that I could get at the lower end. And then we'll work our way up in future sales to, you know, more pricier items if it seems like it's something that could be worth investing in. Now, this is pretty cool. You can see this is marked here. Uh, it's an enamel iron bath kitchen soap shaving dish that so I'd use this in like a barber shop or something. Cool color. Uh, the price is 40. I think that's about retail on it though. So I'm gonna pass on this as well, but very cool item. So just to give you some perspective, that's where we were. Uh, front entrance is out that way. And then over here, this is like a little dollar bin and I saw this bud vase. This is really solidly constructed. Um, just a buck for this. I'm definitely gonna pick this up. And uh, someone went into the box and tried to grab this photo. So uh, she thought the lady was awesome. So just shows that there's interest in these kind of pictures. So this is one of the uh, glass enclosed cabinets and you can see there's lots of glassware here. Uh, and there's some bone china uh, teacup sets with saucers. In fact, I actually just listed uh, a Queen Anne uh, bone china teacup and saucer set this morning from a garage sale when I picked up a set for 25 cents, uh, actually. It had blue morning glory on it. It's, it's gorgeous. I'll show a picture uh, on the screen. Interesting thing about bone china, it is what it sounds like. It's actually china that's made partly of animal bone. So. Uh, because of that, it's actually very strong. Uh, in fact, it's the strongest type of uh, porcelain, and that's why they can make it thinner than uh, other types of uh, china. And uh, for that reason, it's very desirable. So um, just want to pass that on. A little primetime bone china bonus tip. All right, so as we look out on all of these different cups and saucers, this could be something that could get quite overwhelming to look at. So it's good to have a search strategy with this type of stuff. Uh, what I tend to do is look for something that stands out, that looks like more of a unique piece. And this one definitely does it for me. Even though it's modern or more modern, it's um, made by Two's company. You can see there's even a leather dress there on the bottom, but you have these 3D lilies coming off of it and you have the handle that is shaped like a leaf. And that's really cool. Not only that, but you also have the stir here, which has the flower at the end of it. And you also have the saucer, which has the floral elements too. Just having this one, should be desirable and a good one to pick up for the $10 buy-in. So we're gonna go for this. So looking more for something like that as opposed to something more standard and kind of plain like that. This one doesn't even have you know much of a color element to it. But this one is gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that, look at that leaf down at the bottom. Flowers are prime times friend. Could you believe it? Could you believe the transformation on the channel? Let me know in the comment section if you're pleasantly surprised by all this. <laughs> because I think this is great. All right, let's get this over here. 
and put it in the box. All right, so we do have some bells down here, and this is where identifying patterns really helps because if you remember earlier, I showed you the blue and white piece that was Wedgwood, and this is not marked, but it is Wedgwood. Uh, but, you know, this is about retail on it. Uh, you'd have to add shipping to it um, as well. So, you know, plus shipping, probably go for like 17 bucks. So we're gonna pass on it for the 10. Uh, but of all the bells here, the one that I'm drawn to, surprise, surprise, is the one all the way in the back that takes the most work to get to Christmas time. Isn't that far away? This one isn't even priced. It might be five bucks, but I think it's worth picking this one up. It's uh, pretty cool. It looks like it's uh, a handmade custom piece. So but the vintage look to it and the feel, you know, I think should be appealing to somebody. So and I like the color. So we're, we're going to pick this one up for the five or maybe less. All right, so moving on from that side, we have this side over here. This is a silver plated serving dish. Uh, I could probably get like 40 to 50 out of it. They want eight, but I'm gonna pass on it just because of the size. This handle here is gonna make it a little extra challenging shipping wise. So uh, we're gonna leave it here. Uh, and then there's some clearware here as well. And then down here, uh, there's a painted Japanese um, item here. So uh, 20 bucks on it. It does have a spoon inside. So maybe I should have picked it up. I'll show you the mark on the bottom. Uh, it's actually glued onto it, which I'm not sure if that was supposed to come like that or not. Let me turn it this way. So let me know if you would have picked up this one for the 20 uh, or left it here. Uh, so, you know, we just keep trying to gain experience with these things as we come across them. <laughs> All right, we've got another display area here. Uh, there's a bunch of clear glass here, uh, which I'm not really doing too much with clear glass yet. I've got some work to do on it. Uh, these egg-shaped uh, glass pieces here, they're more modern, uh, fair. There seem to be more modern things in here. Uh, this is cool. This is a Queen Elizabeth uh, cup. Uh, it's pretty vintage, but you know, five bucks, it would probably go for around 18, 19, 20 bucks or so. I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, but the thing that jumps out to me here are these uh, shamrock plates. They're really high quality. You could feel that they're pretty heavy. They don't have a maker's mark on it, but they're just three bucks a piece. So there's two of them. So I'm gonna grab both of these. All right, so we're gonna move out of that room and uh, go into this room, which this would really be an incredible room to hang out in because you've got this nice view of the river. Oh, wait a minute, check this out. This is actually the kitchen area. So you can imagine this, you're cooking your meals here and then looking out right on the river like that. That is amazing. All right, so the stuff here so far in the kitchen is more standard fare. It's very common mixing glass you're gonna come across uh, often. Some standard um, tins like lubricating oil tins. Some are good to pick up, but just not those particular ones. Uh, then we have this liquor bottle with the windmill on it. Um, this is fairly common, so I'm gonna pass on it for the five. And this is what I was talking about, the difference between it saying China or made in China on the bottom. So you know, some pretty common pieces we're gonna leave here. All right, this is a view from the other side of the kitchen. Uh, this is just something to be on the lookout for uh, or be careful about. You'll see here it says Corelware, $2 each. And so you might think that it's all Corelware, but you really have to look it over because sometimes things could be kind of tricky. So like, let's look over here. If you look at this plate, on the bottom, you can see it's marked Corel, but then we take this one off over here and flip it over, you can see it's Pyrex, even though it's a different design. Now you also have to be careful with Pyrex because there's some Pyrex that's good to pick up and others that you should pass on. I'm gonna pass on the cup and I'm gonna pass on this uh, dessert dish over here. Uh, and this is something over here 
uh, to be careful of as well because uh, the butter dishes could be great. Like it really does depend on the design on the top because there's one with an uh, old Amish print on it, and as long as most of the print is on there, then it could be a dish, a butter dish that goes for like 85 bucks. This one's pretty stained up. You could probably get the stains out, but this is more of like a snowflake design um, for 20 bucks. You could probably get like 30 out of it, 25, 30. So we're gonna pass on it for the 20. But uh, you know, just some little pointers uh, to you know, just be on the lookout for. These I'm passing up just because you know the design on it doesn't really jump out too much. It's pretty minimalized here uh, on the on the cup and just doesn't seem to be a lot of value in it. But you know, be on the lookout for these things. Oh, and I forgot to mention this hamburger press is pretty cool. A little bit faded, but I like the roosters on it. Uh, this is something that uh, would have been made in Japan. I don't know if it's, it probably had a sticker on it back in the day that said that, but it's been peeled off. Uh, but there's a ton of these around. It's not really worth that much. It's cool, and I normally pick up rooster stuff, especially if it's wooden and vintage, but there's always exceptions, so this is the one I'm going to pass on. All right, so we're going to move on from the kitchen out down through the basement area which is over here. But before I do, I just want to point this out because every time I pass by a pencil sharpener, if I don't pick it up, uh, someone says something in the comments about it. I do talk a lot about picking up pencil sharpeners. This is a Boston red plastic one. The thing is the plastic ones are not really the ones that you're looking for. You're looking for the ones that are all metal. Uh, so we're going to pass up on this because this is about like a you know, $15 sharpener or so. So uh, not really that desirable. There's still a lot of them around. Look for the metal ones though. All right, here we go. Heading down the basement stairs. What lies down below? Here we go. Nice musty smell. I always like that. And all right. Got a bunch of stuff to explore, so let's just work our way through it. And ooh, look at that. It's like a secret hidden room over there. I like that. All right, these are some cool modern items here. They're just a buck a piece, but they are made in China. So I am going to pass on them, uh, but they're cool items. You know, someone might want to pick something like this up if they want some, you know, items to be on the table for like a wedding or something, a good little decorations and stuff. That's why it's great deals at estate sales. You should definitely go check them out if you haven't yet, uh, even just to shop personally besides sourcing. Yeah, so I do look for thermos items. This is a pretty cool one. Uh, I like the color, especially for a fall, uh, $3, but you know, they made a million of these things. So uh, you can get them online for like less than 20 bucks, like 15, 16 bucks. Uh, this one here too. Uh, nothing too flashy about this one. Uh, gonna pass on them, but you know, always look on the bottom. You're gonna find the model numbers. Sometimes they're easier to see. Plus, they break it into different parts. Like you could, you know, look up the the model number for the uh, main component. You could look it up for the filler, for the stopper, for the cup. Like there's all different elements that have numbers on it. So, uh, just FYI. All right, so right off of the staircase is this. This is really neat. This is called camp cards. So it was something that you would send off to the soldiers. Look at these postcards inside. So the ephemera fans watching this are gonna love it. And you also have a correspondence record so you could track who you sent the postcards to. So let me get, get this out of the glare so you could see it a little bit better. So. Yeah, check this out. Let me start back at the beginning there because the imagery on this is really nice. Wow, this is super cool. I have not seen these before, so postcard fans are really going to like these. Look at that. You've got the soldier dancing down on the bottom, sleeping. There's cool imagery and words. Got some over here as well. Some of them are duplicates. Now look at this one here. <laughs> I love that one. That's my favorite one so far. Oh my gosh. Wow, there's a lot of pages and it looks like it hasn't been used before. So, uh, 
Let's see if we have a year on it. 1942, in great condition. Look at that. Spine's intact. This is really nice, and it looks like it also has the envelope here. So keep in touch, visits by mail, 20 bucks. You know, I think I'm gonna go for it for the 20. So we'll pop it in here. Just haven't seen this before, very cool piece. Uh, the other thing I like about this, uh, having a name on it like this is, you know, it's military and you could uh, associate some provenance with this as well. So, you know, it's another good feature. All right, so there are a bunch of like random tools and stuff all over the place. That's a lot of what's down here. Uh, these two patches are pretty commonplace. You know, I'm not really into doing stuff with bikes. I'm kind of jealous of Mike Wolf from American Pickers. He knows so much about that stuff. Maybe one day. Uh, and then there's these little rooms, which are cool. There's not too much in them. Like there's this old sink. I put my box here already. Uh, and there's some chipped pottery pieces. I really wish this one wasn't chipped because this is so cool. But if we look around up here. Yeah, it's definitely a chip. You can see there's a rough edge on it. A little deceiving because it does have these natural waves on it. So, but oh my gosh, if you look at it that way, you could definitely tell. Um, so darn it, that would have been really nice to pick up, but all right, win some, lose some. All right, so let's work our way into the secret room over here that has been revealed. Looks like we've got a bunch of random stuff here, paint cans and stuff, nothing I'm gonna pick up. We've got some damaged magazines. Oh boy, yeah, they're, they're just totally molded. Okay, so this whole thing is molded up. And then over here though, we have some, oh, look at this. Eastern United States Snowmobile Championships, 1974 New York State Fairgrounds. Wow. It looks like a two, three. I'm not sure how much interest there would be in this, but it's definitely not something you come across every day. Four. Let's see what else we got. Here's a different one. Let's see what else we got here. There's a random paper. Uh, not sure. This might be film of one of the races. It's possible. Uh, modified stock art, but you can see how damaged that one is. Damaged, pretty warped. Uh, this one might be salvageable. I think we could salvage this one. Let's look at this one again. No. All right, so we'll grab this stack for sure. Let's put that in the box area. It's pretty dark down, down here. And let's see what else we've got here. Okay, so 1974 Oswego Speedway. So that's from Oswego, New York. They do have a speedway over there. Um, wow, 1974. New York State Fair. Oh, that's a program from the fair. The fair is awesome. I go there every year. This is probably from 74. So I'll grab that. And there's just a bunch of old racing programs here. So whichever ones are intact, I think I'm just gonna scoop them up. Look at this. We've got one here, here. Wow, this is like hitting payday down here. You gotta walk into these secret rooms sometimes to find the treasures. Look at this. All right, I had to refill this because this one's too damaged and right underneath here there is a nudie magazine so I can't show that um, and no I'm not gonna buy it <laughs> oh gosh so yeah the lovely ladies they're always following me even even underneath uh, the magazines the programs in the hidden basements are always there so all right shut the music off shut the music off <laughs> all right. let's see all right we're just gonna I'm just gonna snag all these. This one's too damaged. Wow, we got a lot. All right, we're out of that room and we are going to head out of this area. Uh, this will show you how many of those programs and magazines I picked up there. 
And now we're gonna head up the stairs. All right, here we go. Let's head up these stairs. All right, so that's where we came up from. And then we come off. We've got the bedroom over here. We've got a bathroom over here. Really not too much to look for in the bathroom. The cupboards are bare, but uh, definitely cooled house. And then there's one other uh, bedroom to explore over here. Uh, I'm not seeing much in here. Definitely seems like uh, that opening floor, that first floor was really where the main stuff was with all the glass items. Domino's pizza bag, feather duster, not too much over here. Some modern books, keys I go for if I could get a big lot of them and they're vintage, but there's not enough of them there and some of them look modern. Uh, this is partly clear glass, but also has this pink top. Looks like it's a candy dish, I believe. Uh, but I'm gonna pass on that. Three bucks for it. Uh, I don't see that there's a maker's mark on it. Um, so, I don't know, maybe someone else would've picked it up for the three. This is about a $25 dish, by the way. And some modern magazines over here, uh, needle arts, and then there's some stretch and sews. Uh, these are from the 80s, so I really like them when they're older than that, so I'm gonna pass up on uh, them as well. So, uh, it's, they're five bucks a piece anyway. So, yeah, let's uh, head out that way. All right, this is the last room. I'm not seeing uh, much, if anything, of value in here uh, for me. Um, you know, there's these old Braille books, but, you know, there's not going to be much interest in it. There's nothing here uh, that's good to pick up to flip from the paper items. Uh, there's some records in here, but it's pretty standard fare, folk music, time life stuff, you know, nothing uh, real desirable. Uh, let's see here. There's a Heineken coaster over there. I'll pass. This is a pretty cool uh, chair, but we're not flipping furniture now. Five bucks for it? Wow. If I was flipping furniture, I would definitely pick that up because that would be something that would sell, but we're just not right now. Uh, and let's see, more furniture in the attic. Yep. All right. So it's pretty bare in there. All right. I think that's going to wrap it up. All right, everyone. Well, that's going to wrap us up in the house. Now we've got to go down and check out, get the total price. So stay tuned and I'll let you know how much all this stuff cost. All right, everyone. Well, the total cost for everything that you see here is... $135. Uh, I'm really happy. They gave me a $15 discount just for being a loyal return customer. So that's always appreciated. I said it was October earlier, but almost tomorrow is. But yeah, I'm real happy with this. Wow, everyone. I would say this is the best example of a video where being able to expand into those glass and breakable items really gives you an advantage when you go to a sale like this that actually really didn't have much of the stuff that you're used to me typically sourcing. Um, not a lot of paper items, there were those programs in the end, but really the key was actually when I walked right through the door and just go into that you know, open cabinet display area that had all those vases and dishes and stuff on it. And so, you know, there were other things around the house, but that really was, a key plus they had the box for the um flower uh teacup that i picked up the one with the lilies on it they actually had the original box so they gave that to me when i checked out so that's another uh selling point so things just kept getting better and better so as usual let me know what your favorite item was that i sourced i think there's a lot of things to pick from i think my favorite one would actually be uh the postcard booklet for the uh, military i thought that was super cool and historic uh, but let me know everyone has different tastes and interests and if there's something you would have picked up that i didn't let me know that as well so we both uh, help to teach each other on these types of videos so hopefully uh, this does inspire people to go out and keep expanding those niches into things that 
you know, traditionally might not have been something that you were looking for. So if I could do it, you could do it. And we'll go back and see how Daisy's doing. And then I'll see everyone at the next one. Take care. Hey, Daisy. Hey, just finished your food? How was dinner tonight? <laughs> Did it meet your specifications? <laughs> I think it was pretty good, right? Yep. You get the best food and the best water, right? Now, you have someone you have to find, right? Where's mommy? Where'd mommy go? I think you need to find mommy, right? Where is she? Where'd mommy go? Where could she be? Where is she? Where do you think she is? Oh, oh, she might be upstairs, right? 